We're rolling. This is it. Episode 426 of No Laugh Track Podcast. I am Justin Severson, the host, and uh, we're here at Acme Comedy Company. Why? It's their podcast. I get to talk to the headliner, normally the headliner, each week. This week, it is a first-time headliner at Acme. Curtis Cook is here with me. Hey. How are you, sir? Good. How about yourself? I'm, I'm great. Nice. I'm uh, always happy to be here doing this podcast, always happy to meet new people. So uh, thanks for showing up. Hey, thanks for having me. Lovely to meet you. Yes, so thank you. I, um, where should we start here? Let's start. So I know I was, by the way, I haven't told you this yet. Oh. I was here last night. Oh. Yeah, I saw the show. This is a shocking reveal. Yeah, and we got a lot to talk about. <laughs> no, it was great, dude. Great show last night, for my opinion. Oh, well, thanks, for, man. Thanks for being here. I didn't even realize. Of course. Well, I do, I do a thing where I kind of sneak in and sneak out. I just... Uh, I get here at the last minute, and I, as soon as that MC comes out and said, hey, that's the show, I'm, I'm, I'm out of here. I'm out of here. I got, uh, I got places to be. No, I don't. I just, uh, But I do hit the road pretty quick, especially because I knew I'd be talking to you today. Didn't want to yeah. you know, didn't want to spoil anything. So here we are. I thought the show was fantastic. How did you think your first night went at Acme? Uh, I think it went pretty well. Uh, it's, uh, it's my first time here, so I'm excited to check out the city a little bit more as the week goes on. Uh, but I've been having a lot of fun, and uh, I've heard nothing but positive things about the club, and then getting a chance to see it for the first time, I understand why what? that's the case. Did, did anybody, any of your friends, tell you, like, oh, hey, look forward to this, like, the best thing about Acme is this, or you got to go do this, or... They, everyone just says it's great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you How about go, good thing you're not going in the winter? <laughs> that uh, I'm from Ohio, so I, yeah, I'm excited to be skipping out on the Midwest winter for sure. Yeah, <laughs> a- ab- absolutely. Um, so no history in, in Minneapolis at all, huh? Uh, no. Uh, somebody told me though about uh, the first house with uh, with plumbing is here. Oh, someone said before the White House, there was one house here that got plumbing for the first time. And I, I'm going to try to see it <laughs> like a nerd, <laughs> but I'm excited about it. Huh. <laughs> you know, like on our license plates, uh, it'll, it says land of 10,000 lakes. I'm glad it doesn't say like home of the first, first <laughs> indoor toilet, <laughs> home of the first flush. <laughs> What's on Ohio's? What's Ohio's claim to fame? I think it's. I think it's birthplace of aviation because the Wright brothers were born there, but I think they moved to Kentucky to make the plane. Oh, that's a whole yeah, boy. That's a we should. I shouldn't have gone there. I shouldn't have gone there. I know that that's a whole uh, the Wright brothers. There's a controversial thing. Who who gets to claim them? <laughs> Pretend I didn't bring it. I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, how long? Where, so how long have you been doing comedy now that you finally ended up at Acme in in uh, August of 2021? Uh, I think it's uh, been about 10 years, I think. Sounds right. 10 years? <laughs> 10 years? I'll check my notes. Yes, that's exactly correct. Oh, no, yeah, I don't research. actually have that here. <laughs> <laughs> I have a, I have a good idea of when you started. Uh, and I, from my research, I yes, I bless you said it on stage last night, born in Ohio. Born in Ohio. And then I uh, saw you started comedy in Cleveland? Started comedy in Cleveland, yeah. In Cleveland. So what was the, what was the setup? What was the situation in Cleveland starting comedy? Uh, I was not old enough to go to bars, so I was just sneaking in and hoping nobody would complain, uh, which in retrospect, I'm like, oh, that really put a lot of people's jobs in danger. I probably shouldn't have done that, but we'd go into whatever, wherever there was a a mic or anything and do a show and then leave respectfully and get drunk back in my dorm room and not at the bar, but it was nice. Uh, I met a lot of really cool people there and there's a lot of them. If not most of them are still doing it. A couple people have moved to Los Angeles since, so it's nice. Uh, I don't think you realize at the time that the people you're starting with are going to be such a intimate part of your life. But yeah, uh huh, yeah. So do, were, no, I also know that you eventually moved to Portland, correct? I did. So were, what do you claim? Like you know, there's people that haven't lived in Minneapolis for 15 years, but they will still claim like Acme as their home club. Nice. What is your Home club. My, uh, there's a place in. Was this who, another cover? Should we not go there? No, now I'm like, oh <laughs> shit, who's gonna get mad? If they, <laughs> yeah. uh, I've been fortunate to have uh, to live in places with some clubs that really prioritize uh, giving local talent a chance. So uh, there was a place in Cleveland, or there is a place in Cleveland called Hilarity's Fourth Street Theater, Pickwick and Frolic, and that place is great, uh, and I consider that home. And then. In Portland, uh, Helium Comedy Club is a fantastic venue that gives a lot of people opportunities, and I really value them. Okay. 
So I'm I'm cheating because I'm listing both, but nobody gets to be upset <laughs> with me. So that, that's a very. Uh, when did you run for office, by the way? Because it mm. seemed like you. <laughs> Thank you so much for asking. That's such a great question. Let's go to the galley. <laughs> what was I? Uh, I was watching this. Um, uh, COVID press conference thing yesterday, and every time this guy answered a question, before he answered it, he went, that's a very good question. <laughs> I, dude, they're not all good questions. <laughs> like, I watched it for 10 minutes, heard six questions, everyone, that's a very good question. I'm starting, I don't think you're a little disingenuous. I don't know, that, I'm not sure you mean that. I think you're just trying to be a nice guy. In any case, I think, uh, so let's, I want to talk a little bit about your set last night, um let's see you did a little bit of talking to the crowd did a little bit of that is that normal uh sometimes uh sometimes yeah and they were all really lovely it was nice to meet everybody yeah so how much uh, i do want to ask how much stage time have you had recently like obviously we're still in this weird situation with a pandemic that i guess is resurging or whatever the hell's going on i'm not sure what's going on right now but we're in a weird time that's yeah. that we can agree on how much stage time have you been getting last you know few months last few months have been uh better uh there was a couple zoom shows i did in the thick of it and i'm glad to be in person again um yeah i mean i've been traveling more and trying to be safe in the communities that i'm going to but it's been fun i think uh i was just before the pandemic reaching a point where the travel was starting to feel slightly burdensome and oh. now i am ex really enthused to get back to it and to see parts of the country that i either haven't seen in a while or never got to see yeah like right here like right here exactly <laughs> Exactly. I uh, the poster, whatever you would call that, the promo thing that mm -hmm. you had done for your shows here. Yeah, fantastic. Oh, thanks. The uh, your head on the spoon, <laughs> your head is the cherry. <laughs> I guess it would be. I was not sure. Uh, I was like, this is the only thing I know about Minneapolis. <laughs> I wasn't sure if the locals would be like, oh, fucking tired of this. Or sorry, can we? Sw uh, sure. Yeah, all yeah, right. Yeah. Sorry. Uh huh. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, like, we're so protective of it. Don't yeah. you, you never. This is a very special thing here. I mean, you might as well just put yourself up on a cross. I mean, come on, <laughs> man. Don't you dare. No. No, I think that's good work. Are you selling merch? Like, is that on a poster or anything? Uh, I will just, uh, I give stickers out for free just to thank people for making this. I mean, COVID made me realize uh, fully uh, that it's a group effort, <laughs> and so I'm. We're in this together. We're Chris. in this together, and people are taking a chance coming to see uh, comedy, and I'm just so thankful that I want to have like some kind of party favor. So I just give stickers out afterwards, and I've got one of those stickers. Yeah, right on. <laughs> <laughs> is it? Are you on the sticker? Yeah, it's the it's the spoon bridge and cherry image, and I'll oh, just pass oh, them is out. that? Yeah. Oh, awesome! <laughs> well, I gotta get one of those before I leave. Then, did you have them here, Nate? Uh, I didn't. I should have brought one. If you, uh, oh, yeah. you're gonna have to leave me one in back. Then. Yeah, I will for you're sure. Have to leave me one in back. So uh, we talked a little bit before we got started, and uh, you, I guess you were tipped in on how I do a lot of research for the podcast here. And one of the things that I didn't have to dig deep to find this was, oh, no. and it's something that you did. Uh, I guess it was last. Oh, I know it was last year on Twitter. Oh. Uh. <laughs> Dr. Oz? Yeah. Is, I, I apologize if this is something you're sick of talking about. No. But I, when I found out about this, I laughed out loud. Especially, well, let's just explain. So last year, <laughs> Dr. Oz uh, went on, uh, what is he on, probably Fox News or something, was talking about uh, COVID and shots, and he was upsetting some people. Sounds like he upset you. <laughs> A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> so you had a verified account yeah. on Twitter. And what did you do? You changed your name? I changed my name and, and profile to be Dr. Oz uh, and then tweeted, I'll kill your kids. I'd kill your kids myself if they'd let me. And then uh, was gently removed from Twitter for a few days. <laughs> you know what part, Curtis, really makes me laugh out loud is that uh, for, I think just for a brief moment, your blue check mark was, was still there, there next to his picture. <laughs> and I showed it to my wife and she's like, so it is Dr. Oz? I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> but it, oh my God, dude, that is so funny. Oh, thanks, man. So funny. Uh, it was fun while it lasted. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> uh, do, you, do you even think, like, does that even get on a guy's radar? Like, do you think that get on, gets on Dr. Oz's radar that he's being mocked by a comedian on Twitter? <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, I have no idea. I hope 
he knows everyone hates him. <laughs> <laughs> but that's all I got. <laughs> yeah, he's uh you know, those TV doctors. I, yeah. I don't I, I, I you know, yeah. I I just don't know. I saw him in person once when the Super Bowl was here and they had all those celebrities in town. Oh like, yeah. Super Bowl week all at the Mall of America. Well, I crossed paths with Dr. Oz. Along with many other uh, many other fine celebrities, <laughs> there's really no end to that story. But I loved that. Did you have you done that to any other celebrities where you've uh, impersonated them and then got kicked off of social media? Oh, you have to uh, think about this. Uh, yeah, I have a problem with Twitter. <laughs> uh, how many uh, fake? In a wait while. a minute. How many fake accounts do you have? Okay, just a couple. <laughs> no. I'll change my profile and stuff every once in a while, uh, but now without the check mark, people uh, know, so I don't get kicked off. I think, uh, but uh, we'll see what happens next. <laughs> I freaking love that so much. Oh, I love that so much. How did you? Uh, how did you spend a lot of the lockdown last year? What did? What were you doing? Oh, just hanging out alone with my thoughts. <laughs> uh, in California. I was in California, yeah. which. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why. It's <laughs> paying California rent to not have any opportunity, but <laughs> I, yeah, right. We stuck it out. Um, we got married. I got pandemic married. Yeah, so I guess you I said that on stage that. last night. Yeah, that was a big exciting thing that happened. Um, it wasn't a fun excuse to not have family involved, uh, but it was it was sweet, and I'm glad to know her. You're a married guy. Yes. Yes. That's always. I'm always so happy when people are uh, in love in whatever capacity. I've done that uh, ceremony twice. And nice. The, and the, oh. it'll be two and no more. Hey, that's <laughs> right. You, you get it right the second time. Absolutely. <laughs> it, absolutely. 100%. Uh, and I wish you never have to do that a second time. Oh, stick thank with, you so Stick much. with this one. I'm going to try. S- stick with this one. It's a, it's a solid option, I, I really do think. Um, was there is there a story behind why you had to get married in the pandemic without any family around? I had insurance. <laughs> You had insurance and she didn't. She didn't. Uh, we were going to get married anyways. Uh, and then as the date approached, we uh, realized that we were just going to hold on to it. Um, we're hoping to have uh, some kind of a, an event or ceremony later, but uh, we'll, who knows when that'll be. Oh, that's not planned yet? You don't have people like, come on, everybody's looking for an excuse for a party. <laughs> we do have Family must be that. like. But they're all old, so we're like, stay away f- from us. Stay in your homes. <laughs> Good point. Yeah. yeah. You're like, hey, I, we were just a, we uh, in invites were in were uh, stamped. Yeah, we're we couldn't mail them out. We'll see what happens. I mean, we're gonna have to wait for uh, the next variant maybe to pass through, and then we'll uh, have the have the big party. <laughs> how was your How was your ceremony the second time? Uh, let me see which one was. Oh no, it was fa- <laughs> it was uh it was fantastic. Actually, uh, it, it was really good. My my daughter, one of my daughters, read. Well, actually, they both read stuff. Oh, that's like beautiful. At the, as little girls, like, got up in front of everybody and read, like, these little passages. That's so sweet. It was incredible, actually. That was, like, that yeah. was awesome. Damn. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I didn't think they could do it without, like, I don't know. They were, like, so what? So, let's see. They're 13 to 15 minus 6. So, yeah, 7 and 9. And they did that. It was un- incredible. That's that was sweet. That was probably my favorite part. <laughs> the worst part was that we uh, served food via a... Uh, like people just had to walk down a line and serve themselves, and it took forever. That uh, was a huge mistake. We okay. should not have done that. <laughs> we were really cheap on the food and had people serve themselves. Huge mistake. There were people done eating for like an hour and a half before other people were even like serving themselves. Okay. Hey, but that it sounds like you had a good turnout. Yeah. Yo. Oh, yeah. It was great. Did you do a honeymoon, by the way? <laughs> we were alone together for a year, but uh, we didn't go anywhere yet. <laughs> uh, yeah, that doesn't qualify as a honeymoon. She's not gonna let you. There's no way she's letting you get away with that as a honeymoon, right? We'll see. Everything keeps – life keeps happening. So uh, we want to go somewhere, but we haven't figured it out yet. Good. Oh, fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. So what I want to – Sorry. What did, what did you guys go? Yes. We went to uh, – let's see. My first – I'm going to tell you about the first one, too. I did a Caribbean cruise oh, when I got nice. married many, many years ago to my first wife. We did a Caribbean cruise, and that was fantastic. And then uh, for this one, we went to Jamaica. Okay. Which was unbelievable. Yeah? Yeah. Highly recommend going to Jamaica for a week. Uh, All-inclusive. Probably the best vacation I've ever been on. Oh, I've heard those all-inclusive places are great. Unbelievable. Okay. And then you get out of the all-inclusive place and go hang out. Like, a wee, what do you do? You kind of pay a local 
to be your protection slash guide. All right. And then you go, you leave the gated area and go into the actual, you know, towns and stuff. It's culture shock, but it's wonderful. And I, I highly recommend doing that if you ever go to Jamaica. Yeah. Pay a local to keep an eye on you and show you what it's really like. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah participate in the economy a little bit. That's great. Totally. And uh, I remember, I'll just tell you this real quick. One time we did this, uh, we took like a road trip with them to go see, you know, some blue lagoon hole thing in the ground or whatever. It was amazing. But we were driving, th- we were driving through this one small town and the driver is like, the glass, put up the glass, put up the glass. We're like, what? The glass? Put up the glass. He meant to put up the windows and back, and uh, then he had us duck down while we slowly drove through the middle of this town, like where there was a lot of traffic. I have no idea why he was hiding us, but he hid us in the back seat of his car. Okay, so that's the guy you want on your side. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, why are we hiding? <laughs> this is scary. But all right. Hey, um... Uh, so my 15-year-old daughter is, she didn't actually, she didn't do this correctly. She wanted to get a summer job, but instead of trying to get one in June or May, like when the school year ends, mm-hmm. she's has been getting job interviews in the last couple of weeks to get a <laughs> summer job when school starts <laughs> right around Labor Day. Damn. Uh, but she's been applying at these fast food restaurants. Okay. Did you ever work at a fast food restaurant? Uh, In my day, yeah. I will say that uh, it, only the biggest dorks worked at fast food restaurants. Like, really? if you got a job at a restaurant, you had to be, like, a busboy or a dishwasher. If you worked with the uniform, you were teased out of school. You couldn't... <laughs> Don't you dare work at McDonald's. Yeah, well, I uh, I feel like McDonald's might have been a step up from where I was at a place called Steak and Shake. Do you oh, guys have those? Yeah. Yeah, I've heard of that. Uh, well, the uniform there is horrible. Was that in a uh, Was that in a mall? No, it mall was, food court. It was outside of the the Walmart they built by an amusement park that shut down. Uh, but it was nice. Yeah. Yeah. What well, was, it wasn't nice, but what was your job there? I was a server, and uh, everyone there dreamed of working at the Ruby Tuesdays across the street. Oh, that was the big stuff. <laughs> that up. was the big dream because they had uh, better tips and a bar, and we were like, "Holy shit, a shift drink! What a dream!" Yeah, right. But it was. I still have a steak and shake. Uh, what? Is it? Steak and shake is a classic American brand, and we intend to lead and dominate the classic burger and milkshake segment of the industry. They make you memorize that, and it's still rattling around in there for some reason. Holy crap. If you ever have a chance, memorize it, storm into a steak and shake, shout it, and sometimes they'll give you a free thing. (laughs) Holy crap, man. (laughs) They're not led by some cult leader or something, are they? It's kind of. They're led by a guy named Sardar who has a giant picture of himself in the front of every steak and shake. (laughs) Now this is starting to sound like Scientology. Oh, yeah. Every... (laughs) There's not a good fast food restaurant <laughs> to work for, but uh, I guess and there's some, I don't know, there's some that give you benefits at a certain point and are the only options in some town, so I don't want to talk too much shit, but also they're horrible. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and these days, these well, I will say these those places need so much help these days that if you get bad service, there's really nothing you can say because they're all so desperate just to get anybody to show up. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's rough. The work hey, is not fun, yeah. No, hey, so uh, uh, yeah. before we go too much farther, there's something uh, uh, that you mentioned last night, and I don't want to, like, ruin your joke. I'm not going to have you, you know, I'm not trying to set you, uh, get you to repeat it or anything like that, clearly. I'm just going to say this, that you have a joke where you bring up uh, Reese Witherspoon. Oh, yeah. And it, it's, uh, there's a connection, possibly, between <laughs> relatives, uh of your family and hers, possibly. I think possibly. Possibly. Because she, uh, to my, to the best of my, it sounds, uh, <laughs> it sounds like I've deeply researched Reese Witherspoon for kicks, but to the best of my research, she claims to be related to people who potentially owned my family pre-Civil War. Uh, I have not confirmed if that's fully true, and I don't know her actual lineage, but was she on one of those ancestry TV shows, or how was I, how Wicked, was that I just information even out there? So she, uh, there's a guy named John Witherspoon who signed the Declaration of Independence, and she claims to be related to him. Uh, and I guess you can claim to be related to anybody. So I don't have the actual math done, but uh, based on the research I've done, it's possible. <laughs> and I want Skippy Gates to bring me on PBS. 
and so we can talk about yes, it. Yes, that show. That's exactly <laughs> what I was thinking of. I love, oh, I love PBS. Skippy Gates and Rick Steves are my shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> I My dream is that uh, one day you are face-to-face with Reese. <laughs> I just want to see and she how has she like, would react. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is she like white guilt or is she like, oh, come on. It's so, come on. I think it would, I think she'd just be like, I don't give a shit. Yeah. <laughs> but we'll see. <laughs> Maybe one day. <laughs> if you keep this to yourself, do you want to roll in one of my movies? Hey, honestly, I would strongly consider that. <laughs> I would love to be in Sweet Home Alabama too. Yeah. <laughs> see how it goes. <laughs> so. I am going to give you another example of my uh, research, and this one might, I think this one's going to surprise you. You've got me terrified. I'm like, how deep does it go? Oh, boy. Do you remember your girlfriend from ninth grade? Come on out. <laughs> no. Um, maybe you can give me some tips on this one, because I, so there was, uh, I was scrolling through your Instagram. Hello? This was one, it was a post of you and some of the boys back, like, in high school. And somebody commented about uh, you guys looking like a bunch of virgins. Oh. Oh, yeah. I remember that one. And then you said you, that you were, what was it? The treasurer of the abstinence society. Oh, yeah. I got paid good money to tell people not to have sex. And then you said, I wish I was joking. So this is real. It was real. How, what? <laughs> how? Why? Where? So I was. Uh, and how do I trick my daughters into doing the same into thing? Doing abs- Listen, tell them that it, it pays okay. If you, she can't get a summer job, tell her just like you get so. Uh, what I age? Was what, a, what's up? What age was this? Uh, <laughs> I think it was a junior, uh, a junior in high school. I was a virgin, and they had an announcement on the PA that was like the abstinence club is recruiting essentially uh if you qualify <laughs> which is probably a frustrating thing for a principal to have to say uh <laughs> to their kids like, if you happen to be a virgin you can get out of math class and we wanted to get out of math class so we went and they told us about how sex is the devil <laughs> and you should never have it uh and then we could continue getting out of math class if we as high schoolers would go to the middle school and tell them not to have sex until marriage uh and then uh, I, uh, I don't know. I was pretty good at it, <laughs> which is not like a fun thing. To s- I was really good at being a virgin. <laughs> and so I would go, um, and tell uh, kids slightly younger than me not to have sex. And then they would start, uh, they started paying me to go to other parts of town to tell other kids not to have sex. Get out of here. Yeah. It's a great, uh, well, it wasn't a grift cause I really wasn't having sex, but uh, it's a fine opportunity. Uh, so it's a it's a summer job. <laughs> Are they like, well, uh, if you're still qualified, you can you're come still, back next summer. They stop asking questions at a certain. Point. I bet. <laughs> I do remember that when I did lose my virginity, I was like, this is a little bit better than the money. <laughs> I'm happy about this. <laughs> did you did you have any ki- uh, kids later come up to you and be like? You mother, dude! <laughs> you motherfucker! No, I should have been doing this when I was much younger. Ah, uh, well, <laughs> no! Luckily, That's I have good. not had to deal with that. <laughs> uh, I, <laughs> you ruined my college years. <laughs> I hope nobody held on to it longer than I did, <laughs> especially if they weren't getting checks. Jesus! <laughs> oh my God! There was money involved. There was money involved. Uh, did you have a business card that said like abstinence <laughs> virgin leader? Curtis Cook abstinence community leader? Uh, no, but you're right. I haven't thought about this in years. The money was involved, and I think that was, like, part of... Uh, in retrospect, they did get people who who were very thankful to have healthy children but had them early, and so they were struggling financially. Oh, and now yeah. I'm realizing that they were essentially paying people to tell people that they regretted their child. Oh. Uh, I'm going to have to examine this memory a lot harder after this. <laughs> Did you have like viewing parties of uh, sixteen and pregnant and teen mom? <laughs> uh, well, we uh, we yeah, they would bring people in and they'd be like, obviously we're glad we have our kid, but uh, it's ru- ruined our life and we shouldn't have had sex. But they also it was a uh, wow. it was abstinence only education, so we're like they in retro I, in retrospect I do regret participating because you it, I think I think use protection is a better message than don't have fun. But, yeah, 
I mean, it's much more realistic. So yeah. Let's be honest. Uh, wow. And this was through, I'm guessing, some sort of church school? <laughs> uh, it was a conservative area, but it was a public school. I'm not sure what the organization's history is. Really? Uh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. No kidding. Tell me... Uh, I, so I did a look. Uh, a fun thing I like to do is look up things about people's like hometowns. And you're from where is it? Auburn. You look up Auburn town. You find out about Bill Bad Bradley. Oh no! What do I need to know about Bill Bad Bradley? I think it's Bill Bill Bad Bradley was the founder. He was a. Uh, Let me guess. Racist. We need probably. to change the name. Probably. <laughs> uh, so Auburn Township. Auburn Township has its own website, by the way. Oh, why? <laughs> <laughs> well, when I give you some of these stats, I'm, I'm uh, other people are probably going to question that as well. Auburn Township is a semi-rural community mm -hmm. located in the southwest corner of G Geauga. Geauga. I never would have Geauga. Geauga County. We em we embrace true. <laughs> ready for this? We embrace two true country style living. Ooh. <laughs> but offer the perfect balance of residential, commercial, and industrial growth. Balance could be a little better, but I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> little place. The township is about five miles square mm -hmm. and houses approximately 6,443 residents. Oh, whoa, that's up from what I heard. Is it? Time. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. It says uh, the Auburn Township has the highest rate of growth of all 16 g g g county <laughs> townships. That that makes sense, yeah. Yeah, and if you are a low income resident right now, they will give you a free smoke detector. Okay, that's at least something. Huh? Okay. Huh? And then the other fun thing I learned about you, because I didn't know any of that stuff, is that uh, <laughs> you went to Oberlin College. Correct? I did. Yeah. Graduated. Mm -hmm. Yep. And here's a I did not know that that school's mascot. What are what are the team? What are the team sports there? Oh, uh, the Yeoman. Yeah. The yeoman and the yo women? Yeah. 14th century, uh, what is it? It's a 14th century uh, f landless farmer, I think. What an odd name. The whole place is weird. <laughs> yeoman. <laughs> and then yeah. I saw the mascot is a like an albino squirrel. Oh, yeah. There's a bunch of albino squirrels, which uh, there's a school in Ohio called Kent uh, that has a lot of black squirrels. I don't know what's going on with small mammal life in ohio this isn't a race wait a minute one has black the other one has white i think it's not right <laughs> and we keep them separate <laughs> <laughs> weird the white i wonder what the story is with all the albino uh squirrels i'm not sure that whole place is uh the cool the i think like the so kent has a what is it the kent state four i think so they have their yeah. claim to fame there. right and then years before Oberlin, like, um, when they were doing, like, recapture programs for runaway slaves, uh, they caught a slave and imprisoned him. And I guess the entire Oberlin community was like, no. And so they broke him out of jail. Oh, good. Canada. Yeah, oh, yeah, sorry. The story ends happy. A lot yeah. of times it doesn't. But yeah. that one's a positive one. And he's still locked up. What? <laughs> no, 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 no. Hey, one. So uh, before we run out of time here, this is the thing I could have brought this up earlier, but this is fantastic. So you recently spent, uh, you stopped back at home. I was back at home, yeah. And you found, I saw this on your Twitter, eighth grade career oh, project. I gotta stop posting things. I forget that people can see it and then bring it up to you. <laughs> yeah, they do. How did you want to? Eighth grade, you wanted to be a stand-up comedian. Eighth grade, I wanted to be a stand-up comedian. That's uh, crazy. Based on what? I just heard some. Uh, and I was like, this is fun. And then I guess I put two and two together that you could do it. Uh, but I didn't really know anything about it. Like, we couldn't, we didn't have HBO or anything. Um, so I would go to who the library. Who do you think you library. were seeing? What's who, up? Were, who were you seeing doing stand up on TV? Oh, man. Uh, uh, I remember, <laughs> I remember the. Uh, uh, the Blue Collar Comedy Tour was really big, and I remember as a kid really liking Ron White, uh, who I still enjoy. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, he's funny. And then my when I told my uh, folks about it, they tried to get me into kind of the uh, more age-appropriate stuff like Bob Hope and uh, Jack Jack Parr. And then my oh, wow. grandmother, uh, wow. who I lived with it at the time, was super into Rusty Warren and Bill Barth who are not appropriate for kids to listen to and she's she's gone now but uh, I've listened to them more and more since and I <laughs> learning that my grandmother is a filthy bird <laughs> was quite an experience <laughs> no kidding yeah it was fun I wish uh, I wish I had 
uh, yeah, yeah, one day maybe, but I wish I had spoken to her more about that uh, or been old enough to ask her about it before she passed. Yeah, right? I don't think you want, like, an eight-year-old being like, uh, so, Grandma, you like gangbang humor? What's going <laughs> on <I got>, here? <laughs> Put on one of your party albums, Grandma. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Um, you uh, Do you have plans for recording of your own stuff? Uh, one day I'd love to. Um I have my <laughs> my uh, hobby right now is to collect old stand up records uh, and just kind of uh, d- personally discover people that uh, were largely forgotten. Because I think a lot of people's comedy history comes from like every three years, PBS or CNN or Comedy Central does a documentary about the greatest stand ups, and it's pretty it's pretty much the same six names every single time. And it's those people are great and yeah. influential, but. Uh, you know, as someone who interviews a bunch of people, that there are plenty of other acts uh, out there, and so oh, I've been really enjoying that. So many, so yeah. many that deserve more attention current currently that aren't getting it. So many from the past. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Is there anybody like off the top of your head that fits into that? Uh, I've been really uh, enjoying this guy. Uh, uh, I think he died in the '60s. Godfrey Cambridge. Okay, uh, he's a lot of fun. He was in a couple movies. He has like four stand-up albums that I really like. Uh, it's a guy named Jerry. Jerry Crowler, uh, who had like 15 albums. Uh, oh. He was like a Rotary Club speaker at Yazoo in Yazoo, Mississippi, uh, who went on to do stand up, uh, which I just enjoy the story of. Uh, who else? I don't know. I've got a. I've got a. I I buy records faster than I listen to them for sure. Sure. Uh, so I need to work on that. Well, that is kind of fun. the fun. That is kind of the fun sometimes. Yeah. What about you? Do you have anybody? Come to mind? Oh, well, I could. Uh, how about this? I can tell you that I'm building up my little uh, comedy album collection right nice. now as well. Oh yeah. Yeah, but then my <laughs> I, my dad is a uh, what do you call it? Junker? No, antique collector, reseller. I don't know what you want to call it. He goes to like thrift stores, garage sales, buy stuff. Sometimes keep stuff. Sometimes try to resell it. Oh, sometimes okay. I help them resell stuff. It's like uh, that... American Pickers. Sort of, yeah, oh. yeah, on a much, much smaller scale. Fair. Not, not as, <laughs> not as much success, but uh, every now and then. But then, uh, like he'll, like on Christmas, all of a sudden there'll be like, uh, you know, we're all done uh, opening gifts. But then my dad has his special gifts that he probably bought at a garage sale that he doesn't even wrap well. They're just like still in like a garbage uh, <laughs> paper grocery bag or something. He just like staples the top. Here, here's that extra gift. But like I got one this year and it was full of albums. Oh, that's really cool. Bill Cosby was one of them. I didn't know how I felt about that. That one, yeah. I, <laughs> I've i got a lot of him from record stores because none of the money goes to him. So I feel yeah. okay about that. Yeah, right. <laughs> Support a local business. Keep him. I guess with only the millions he already has. Yeah, yeah. What are you gonna I, do? I, I like the way you justify that. I like that. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's <laughs> that's good. Is there? Uh, I, we haven't even got into the. Uh, you do a lot of writing as well, not just the writing of your own jokes, but you do writing I do for write. other shows and stuff. Crank Yankers reboot. You did mm-hmm. some on stuff on that. Correct? That was a fun crew. Yeah. Yeah. American Dad. American Dad. That's been a really fun. Is experience. that so? How much? What's? Let's talk about that just a second. How sure. much? Like American Dad, that's on TBS now. It's on TBS, yeah. How how much are you writing for that? What's your like? What's your? Did you write full episodes that that have already been on? Are you just do you contribute? How does that work? Uh, contribute and write. It's uh, it's a very fun uh system that I am learning because I have just ventured into uh kind of scripted television. Um, and so everyone participates in every episode, and then uh, individuals on staff write uh write. Their own. I want to like use air quotes because everyone's participating, but it's your episode. Uh, so okay, we, yeah, I've yeah. written one. That um, makes sense. I've participated in others, but I uh, because it's animation. Uh, nothing that I have done. There's a couple of things that I was there for that are coming out now, um, but the bulk of of the time that I've been there won't happen until on air until next year. Okay, but when they're on, it, that little thing written by. One of them, hopefully, (laughs) unless they cut it. Yeah, (laughs) I feel. Oh, yeah. uh, I know we talk a little bit. I'm I'm happy to talk about this, but I do find myself immediately being like, oh, shit, I got to make sure (laughs) I don't make anybody upset. (laughs) Yeah, sure. Sure, sure, sure. Fair enough. But no, it's been a really fun experience. And uh, and yeah, the little written by credit will hopefully be there. And I'm I'm sure my cheesy ass will screenshot it and put it somewhere just to feel fancy. I'm telling you, you have to. (laughs) 
<laughs> they, uh, I don't, do you, you know Cy Amundsen, right? Comedian Cy Amundsen? Maybe you don't. But, I might not. Well, uh, you've probably crossed paths yeah. with him. And he, <laughs> he did a voice on an episode, I think it was American Dad, I'm pretty sure. It was one of those Seth MacFarlane shows, probably five, six years ago, he did a voice on an episode. Oh, nice. And they spelled his name incorrectly in the credits. <laughs> Oh, that's a bummer. So be on the lookout for that. Yeah, I'll, I'll try to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, lo- I appreciate, man, you guys giving me my credit, but uh, there's no E at the end of Cook or something like that, you know? I'm Curtis uh, with an S, not a C. Come on. <laughs> Come on, man. Is there anything else we should be uh, mentioning, telling people about? Um, you've, you, you predicted you would in eighth grade you'd be a uh, comedian, and here you are. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a nice way of putting it. Instead of just, I made a mistake when I was 12 and never changed. <laughs> <laughs> You're one of the few comedians that, uh, unless I didn't find it, that don't, you don't ho- host a podcast. I don't host a podcast. Uh, I, I, Defend uh, yourself. Where's your podcast? Hey, thank you for having me on this one. <laughs> I, <laughs> it's been a really pleasant conversation, but I... Uh, I don't gen I, and I I don't generally enjoy them. This has been lovely. Oh. I'm not just saying that. This has been really nice. Thank uh, you. But there, because uh, also we had a chance to talk a little bit beforehand. Yeah. Um, but a lot of times, it feels like you're just like trying to have a memorable time with someone you just met, and uh, that uh, why? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I completely agree. But this, it, but again, it, this is lovely. <laughs> he means it. I'm I do. It's it. this is sincere. He means it. Uh Let's get finally. How yeah. do you use social media these days? Poorly, really <laughs> poorly. I should uh, improve at it. Uh, Are you on TikTok like my daughters? I'm not on TikTok. Uh, do you stare at TikTok like my daughters? I don't stare at TikTok. Good I've for you. A couple times. Um, there are fun TikToks. Uh, I'm. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm like a suck. There's like a guy who cooks stuff in a cast iron pot in the woods, and every time that pops up, I'm like, "Well, this is fantastic." <laughs> but I, um, but I, yeah, I, I feel what? like I'm getting old because I've reached a point where I'm like, "Why am I still doing? Yeah, why am I still online? Yeah, I just like I, uh, I feel like it's real counterintuitive to my uh, profession, so I need to work on it. But I'm just like really thrilled by the right to be forgotten, <laughs> and I, so I don't want every thought I've ever had on the internet when I'm gone. <laughs> Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, absolutely. I I get into thing where like I, honestly I think you could tell the mood I'm in on how much I post on social media. Oh. Or just well, I mean also how know, so? being bu- cuz if I'm if I'm in a good mood, I'm more apt to share stuff. Okay. If I'm like feeling depressed or crabby or things aren't going right, I don't like don't yeah, oh. I don't. I don't exist. You don't. I'm not going to share anything I'm doing. I feel that's so much healthier because I feel like the opposite. If things are going well, I'm like, this is just for me. And if things are going horrible, I'm like, everybody needs to know. Oh. <laughs> I'm not having a good time. <laughs> interesting. Oh, horrible. Interesting. But <laughs> I'll try to take a, a cue from your playbook. <laughs> uh, here's another tip. I set a uh, timer for 10 minutes for like facebook oh that's smart yeah so when it when i hit a 10 minute mark which is usually by eight no it's usually (laughs) it takes most (laughs) of the day uh a little thing comes up and then i either have to dismiss it like to go away you know kind of like a little snooze button Mm -hmm. and then it'll come up again in 10 more minutes or i'll be like uh you're right i'm wasting my time on this site what am i searching for it's not here good for you that's really smart i gotta i gotta get on that yeah there's my little tip this has been great. Yeah, thank you so much for having me, man. People, you, you, yeah, thank you. You will be here doing shows through the weekend. Mm-hmm. Uh, follow you on the social medias you do like Instagram. <laughs> right? Yeah, Instagram at Curtis Cook Comedy. Uh, Twitter at Curtis underscore Cook. Was that how? Is that how you promote? That is absolutely <laughs> perfect. And. After the shows, grab it. Come say hi and grab a sticker. Yeah, if you come through, I'll be hanging out. Uh, grab a sticker; they're free. I give, I give out suicide awareness wristbands because my mom told me people who like comedy are sad. Uh, <laughs> so I hope to see you here. Uh, it's a lovely town. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>